Big Boy Big Neighborhood. Boy. All yeah. righty now, ladies and gentlemen. Legendary up in oh, here. Yes. Daz Dillinger yes. in the neighborhood. What up, Daz? What up, what up, family? Man, it is a pleasure to have you in the neighborhood, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Daz, let me tell you, brother, veteran and relevant at the same damn time. I appreciate and it. You ain't, and you ain't never stop, bro. And you know, you Can't know, stop, won't stop. And, as you shouldn't. Hey, man, you know what's crazy about the way you get down to Daz is that a <laughs> lot of cats now, everybody wanted to be on labels. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days, oh, I got to get a Dev Jam. I got to get, get this. Gotta get but deal. you always was like, no, nah, man. You know, you had the big label stuff, yeah. but you always knew how to generate that independent. independent. And you was also one of the cats that said, man, all right, I'm going here and I'm going to go F with, F and F with cats in the South. And you know yeah. what I'm saying? What made you so early on understand that damn near, did you know we were going in this direction? Um, I think so. I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah, uh, you know, just pressing my own records up, seeing the money that a big label would go. Because I used to have talks with Snoopy. He like, man, how you get your records next to mine? Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, what's called pricing and positioning. Yes, sir. And you go in there and you pay for what you want. You know what I mean? And uh, I was pressing up the records for sixty-seven cent a piece, and I make ten dollars out of it. Like right now, I got Daz and Mataz album mm-hmm. right now. Yep. I'm pressed up a double CD. I sold 88 copies yesterday, made 2,000. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. And I only paid 1,200 for 1,000 CDs. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But you can only get it from me now because Best Buy, Target, Walmart, they're not going to be selling CDs no more. So that gives the independent artists a little bit more leverage to put their music out and to And plus, Daz... People, I enjoy hard copy. Like, yeah. I love streaming and everything, look at man. It, feel, I like wanna, I said, I can't hold no digital copy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I look at credits, and uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, I like my mama it. said, if it ain't yours, uh, what, what she say? It ain't yours if you can't put it in your pocket. There it is right there. Yeah, true. man, I try to put it in my pocket, Jack. <laughs> now, I, I can put the whole, you know, the whole phone in there, but yeah. I, I don't know what the cloud is and none of that stuff works, so I try to play. Yeah, you know, the I, the I don't know what might change, the, the, yeah, but you yeah. got to have internet to get on. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. But like so, I said before, they renting the music now. Mm-hmm. Like streaming is right. renting the music. Why mm-hmm. sell you a car when I can rent you a car? Right. You still make money off of it, so I'm going to sell you the song. Or, you know, Why 30 tracks I on Dazzamataz. I, I just couldn't stop making music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once I got in the studio, I, I, I dropped 10 and I dropped five more and I dropped six more and then I started thinking it's a streaming game. Everybody making 16 songs, 10 songs, 12 songs a piece, that's like 45 minutes is over. You going to the next, you know, next album or two. You know what I'm saying? So 30 songs is streaming now. So I just flood the market. <laughs> And, you know and, and I mean? it's pretty much we 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 love them all, or it's buffet. Yeah, take you like take take. But I'm gonna take make sure you that enjoy. you love them all. It's a whole album that's gonna ride. Daz, man, do you think that a lot of people don't know how important you are to everything that we hear uh-huh. on the West Coast? I'm a humble guy. Yeah, yeah. So we we gonna <laughs> we gonna we gonna talk about it. We are gonna bring oh, some yeah. of this humble off of this. Because I was looking at the, you know the Death Row documentary they had last night, and they was cutting me out of everything. Do you say that was something that you even saw last night? Last night on the Death Row documentary BET, you know, mm-hmm. I boycotted them because you know we are getting into it with E One. They're trying to steal our music. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And put faulty paperwork into the game to snatch, you know, faulty Alan Grunblack and all them. So I looked at the. You know, me and my homeboys just blowing. Mm-hmm, at it, you, you know what I mean? And I'm like, man, they cut me out of everything. You know, when they show all the death row, pit, you know, the black, you know, with right. everybody yeah, in there. Yeah. They put like this and they just show my nose. It's open. <laughs> oh. no. Do, have you been feeling, and not even watching something last night, but have you been feeling like people didn't, like a lot of bangers that we heard, mm-hmm. you either produced, you know wrote. what I'm saying? There was, yeah, wrote. Influence, and I'm talking about from everybody from Dre, Pac, Snoop, like, like, and I know it's being humble Jay-Z, as well. Everybody. But, but how, why you didn't speak up on things like that? I was getting paid. I hear you. So you know, I ain't gonna do too much talking. But uh, I'm just a humble guy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm still getting paid from all the records that I produced and, and everything. You know what, what are saying? some of the records you produced that we know? And some of the records that you produced or had a hand in that we don't know, Daz. Like Only, that, that I, we know, but you, we didn't know you had a part of. Uh, Mac 10, Snoop Dogg, and Ice Cube. Only in California. Only I wrote the hook. in California. California. Yeah. yeah. 
They tried to beat me out of that. But wow. <laughs> they redid the hook over. But how do you how do you remain in this thing called hip hop, man? When when you have been vocal, Daz, mm-hmm. about and you were vocal when cats weren't being vocal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When it was so called unsafe to be vocal. Yeah. How how you know what I'm saying? Like how did how do you feel like you, you like man? I have to say what I'm saying right now, no matter what these so called consequences are. I'm a Gemini. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Tupac hung out. You know, he gonna say whatever it is mm-hmm. that he want to say, and I'm gonna say whatever I'm gonna say. What am I scared of you? Or you know what I mean? It's just like walking down the street, somebody step on your feet, and you sh- wanted to say something but you didn't say to him. Mm-hmm. Then you go home, you start thinking about. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Start beating you up even more, like, like man. man I so you know, oh. hey. So it's like right now, I just speak what I feel because you know I pay my own bills. Mm-hmm. You don't pay my bills. Think about the album. Yeah. Catch no Daz. Yeah. Who do you reach out for if you do want to do collaborations? Who do we have on Daz and Mataz? Uh, we have Sugar Free. Mm-hmm. We have Latoya yeah, 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 Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We have Freddie Gibbs, Trey D, Snoop Dogg, Corrupt, M1 from Dead President, <laughs> Rala, Ray J, uh, Tanya Dyson, um, AD, it's mm-hmm. AD, Goldie Loke. Hey man, he's doing twins. a track list in his yeah. head right now. He's I'm like, like oh. you know, it's too. If I forgot somebody, I love you. The yeah. twins. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, but man. I got 30 tracks on there, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, shout out to Superfly. He mixed it. Hey man, you Superfly's another one, bro. That cat yeah, that's my like, partner like, in crime. That, that's, you know that's a silent one right there, bro. Yeah. I do want to ask you, man. Now, there's so many documentaries when it comes to like mm-hmm. Death Row and, and Pac. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Biggie. Like, do you still kind of watch those things or are you are you done with looking at all these so called conspiracies and documentaries and things like that? No, I'm looking at it, see what they're lying about. You know what I'm saying? And uh I have my own movie and everything, but it's so hard to put to get, you know, a deal or someone to look at because everybody else is stealing our ideas, you know right. what I'm saying? Do you feel like sometimes people are afraid of, of what you really have to say? I mean, I got it all on footage. I got 500 tapes, high eight tapes, and DV <laughs> tapes, with uh, footage from when we first started. So it's just about me digitizing everything to cut it all up. But right now I'm in the process of doing that. Let me ask you this, Daz, Death Row-wise, how was it being an artist on Death Row, like the introduction? Because it was one of those things, bro, mm-hmm. where... I remember exactly where I was at yeah. when this movement started. I was telling one of my friends the other day, when I first got to Death Row, we was in the apartment at the Dog Pound apartment, and DOC took me in the back room to rap mm-hmm. with him. You know what I mean? Like, just me and him. If you're going to make it, you're going to be it. Are you out? I mm-hmm. came out, I'm still here. You know what I mean? So that was like a highlight of my life, you know what I'm saying, with the DOC. And we used to go to DOC house and clean up. <laughs> And, you know, when he was moving out of there and find $20,000 check stubs. And, and we like, man, is we going to do Like, dude, do doing it. We going to do this. Are we, we going to be getting some like this? You know? Hey, it all happened. When did you know that you, as as part of Death Row in the Dog Pound, when did you know, like, man, we becoming famous? Um... Is it, is it first hearing your song on radio? I mean, a lot of people knew our songs, but they would ride right past us while they playing it. Yeah. And didn't even know it was us. They only knew our voices back mm. then. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When The Chronic came out, mm-hmm. when Doggy Style came out, then we did Doggy Dog World, and that's when they started knowing who we were. And then we came out with the Dog Pound album. We were supposed so to go dope. on tour, then Tupac came. Mm. And so I was the first person that Tupac hit when he got out of jail. And we did Ambitious of a Rider. I ain't mad at you. Got my mind made up. The first seven songs on that album is all Daz. Damn. You know what I'm saying? What was it like working with Pac? Like people mm-hmm. always, because we were talking, had this conversation off air. And we yeah. was like, what 25-year-old, yeah. 24 and 25-year-old put that much work together? Yeah. Because at that time, Dad, you think I'm going to live forever. I got time. I'm partying. I got this. I got that. Yeah. What was his work ethic like? That every, you saw every morning. We live next door. He smell it, you know what I'm saying. So he come over there, get the beats. He hear it banging because we had a. It was an apartment, Snoop apartment right here, and Tupac apartment was right here, and it was next door. So you would always hear the music, you know what I'm saying. So he would come over early in the morning because I always tell him, you know, early bird get the beats. Mm. <laughs> hey. you know I mean? So he would always come over there and get them. Man, we did a lot of songs that I never even heard that they probably still got over there. 
Damn, do you have anything that you haven't released or? Nah, I, I gave it all to Miss Afeni. You know, she got sued right. me for a hundred million. Oh yeah, yeah, you got to give it up then. Yeah. You know, so I gave it to her. You know, and that was uh, "Don't Fall Asleep" and the Machiavellian Dillinger album I put out. You know, I put it out before I gave it to him because uh, I let you know that I did this work. Because mm -hmm. right now it seems like everybody that's on death row that E1 is owning it now, they're trying to change history, rewrite history, which they will use an old song with a new artist and beat you out of the publishing by giving the new artist more publishing and giving you that much. Daz, what, what, when, when we think about death row, what was the best and what was the worst thing about being on death row? The best thing on death row was just being with Dr. Trey. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And living the high life and, you know, getting paid for it, doing shows, producing. And the worst thing was about it was getting in trouble. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For other people, not us. Right, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. else to come in like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, guilty by association is oh, like, ah, oh. man. You know, I've I seen everybody from Ike Turner on Death Row, Mary J. Blige, wow. um, Joe to see. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people on Death Row that probably didn't come out, but they was on Death Row. What is your relationship like with Dr. Dre now? I mean, you know, we see each other. We cool. You know, what I'm saying I love him. You know, he gave mm -hmm. me my start. I'm his first student. You know, of production. So you know, if I never see him again, I always love him. I heard you know that. What I'm it's Dr. Trey. Yeah, man. Do you do you ever see like what we feel is like, man, wishful thinking? Do we ever see like everybody back together? We're gonna really get back, you know what I mean, right. and get it all together. But you know, hey, man, I, I I would love to see something. I would too. Even remotely close, That's something. What I'm to like, that. You speak it as shell. Yeah. I'm speaking it, man. Into yeah. the universe. Yeah, how do we get the album? Dazzamataz.com. You know what I mean? And you can go online to all retail stores that's selling music online, but you can get the hard copy that's going to be signed by Daz Dillinger with all the information you give me on there. Mm -hmm. If you tell y'all you want it to your dog. Right. Do you I'm, have it on you right now? I got in the Big car. A bring, I got Big A bringing it up here. Right man, now. I want to purchase copies for the neighborhood oh yeah for sure i, I got to Good brother Thank you, man. I, I, I appreciate I, I, and i and i, I, I want to sign i want history on mine though oh fam. yeah for sure you know we family we've been going we've been from day one <sighs> man you know, i always support you you know i wanted to go to japan when y'all were... oh man we, we <laughs> i think we did go over we, there. we we no nah, man i didn't go over there you huh? yeah I, I took her up you know what yeah. i'm saying you, you had to stay home for a little second you yeah, know what i'm saying i can't have i didn't have no pass right <laughs> yeah for years <laughs> yeah. good lord I'm have legal mercy now man hey. no we got we got to get over there in dazzamataz japan fam I mean, you know I'm big boy twice. music let's do it as we should hello you done said it now i need a verse all right uh i day <laughs> daz being that you're such a pioneer in the west coast hip-hop mm -hmm. sound how are you? How are you feeling right now with the sound that's here now? Oh, I love it. I'm a producer. I embrace the sound, use the sound, put it with a little bit of minds. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I was telling somebody, you know, you hear Death Row and you hear Snoop, you hear Corrupt, and you hear everyone else, but you never hear that sound like Death Row sound. Yeah. But when you hear this Dazzmatazz album, I was the creator of that sound. Mm -hmm. So it all sounds like that. And then I got a new album in Superfly producing that sounds like the new. West Coast types music, you know, with a little bit more. <laughs> right? Are you are you satisfied with what what hip hop sounds like right now? Not just West Coast, because it seems like we moving yeah. again. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's all coming back around. Yeah. Do Do you feel like? Or do you feel good about what what music is sounding like now? Yes, I feel from good. an artist and producer. Yep, and an executive. You hello. know what I'm saying? And uh, me and Big Gip from the Goody Mob. Goody Mob, hello. We got a group together called ATLA. And see, that's another wow. thing that I say. That you That's always dope. made sure that you traveled and yeah. you messed with I was other say, cats. A, a D boy never made his money in town. Yes, he always sir. Had to go out of town. And you got that, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So and I hooked up with the Dungeon family. You know what I'm saying? Dog Pound Dungeon family. We all family. You know what I'm saying? And me and Gip put it together. We got a new album coming out this year. We got a movie called ATLA. It's just like House Party with Kid and Play. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It's funny, comedy, shot in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And I involved everybody. Mm -hmm. you know we all cousins what's the relationship with Dog Pound now with you and Corrupt uh, we still family we just did a show the Daz and Mataz release party at the Secret Sesh it was 17 blocks long damn in, you know I think this was the best party of the All Star Weekend because the All Star Weekend was full of stars. <laughs> hey man, I love you, Daz. You sitting here, man, and we got history in the neighborhood too, yes, man. Sir. And I'm gonna just ask you some questions that I, I need to ask you, man. Let's what was your it. relationship with Tupac? It was like a brother, cousin, 
family thing. You know what I'm saying? We always hung out early in the morning. I'm a Gemini. He a Gemini. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we just hung out a lot because I was always mashing. And he wanted that. You know what I'm saying? And I would give him the music. And we did more music than anybody that was on death row. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I just appreciate everything. At any point, so, were you nervous for Pac, like, the way that – Things were being presented or... When he first or, got the death row, right, I told him personally because I seen what Suge Knight and everybody was trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Because they tried to do it with Malik, with Hershey Lowe. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And they wanted mm-hmm. him to represent death row. I told him, man, you know, I love you, Pac, man, but don't let this gang bang and get between us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because I see what Suge was trying to do, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And bring him to the mob and, and do all that. And then it's just like he got caught up into all the gang banging. Mm-hmm. And he didn't know them politics on gang banging. What you know was what your mean? relationship when those things were going down? Were you still trying to talk to him or did you kind of take a, had to uh, take a step back? It was really getting out of control, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because Tupac was like, me and Snoop going to be the generals and y'all going to be the soldiers. <laughs> and if y'all want anything like money or, or a budget or anything, y'all come talk to us and we'll talk to Suge. And I'm like, uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> I'm already getting, you know, doing well. my program already here. And, you know, there's a lot of friction. And then it's just you no know, more power, more money. It's just mm-hmm. it's out of control. Where were, where were you at when you actually heard that Pac got shot, Daz, uh, and, and Pac passed? We was in the passed. studio. We where, where you live? Yeah, we boycotted. We, you know, we was all into it with Death Row at that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah, we yeah. said we wasn't going. You know what I'm saying? And then when we said we wasn't going, we heard that Tupac got shot and Suge mm-hmm. Knight. But in our head, we said Suge ain't dead. He the devil. So, you know, we knew he wasn't dead. Mm-hmm. But Tupac was dead, man. And I was like a shocking to us, man. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's somebody that we grew up with before because we brought Tupac to death row. Mm-hmm. Shug didn't even know nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was our friend from Poetic Justice. Mm. Juice, he gave us a laser disc oh. back in the days when we stayed <gasps> in 1991 before the movie came out and all that. You know what I'm saying? So we knew him before that. And we told Shug, like, man, go get him on death row because we had did that song hard on the nigga. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we gave him 30000 as you see in that movie, where he should came in there and gave him the money, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That was that was from our book, you know what I'm saying? So the, they took that from us. Wow. So we gave him the thirty thousand. We never used the song, and I was supposed to have been for above the rim, above the rim, and then we used it for grill lock. I mean, uh, gang related. Mm. Five you, or six years later. Do you remember your last conversation with Pac? Uh, passed the weed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 we was in a limo. He was telling me about. You know, the Haitian Jack and all that information and just blowing our mind with information he probably wanted us to know. You know mm. what I'm saying? So Did you feel like there was a premonition there, Daz? Like, like with something all he the was work? telling us and Yeah, because yeah, right now he, he gave me my work ethics. You know, he was coming, we was doing songs, we would stay on the song all day. He come in, he knocking them out. Yeah, so that's I started right here. knocking them out because I was in the studio with him and he's like, <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And that's why I started knocking out songs. You know what I'm saying? And that's how our work ethics got great. And there's so many of the unsolved dads and this, that, and the other, man. When you when you watch the unsolved, like they just did a long one on A&E. Mm-hmm. When you watch those kind of things, do you have in your own head, like, y'all not going to, there ain't going to be no six-part series where y'all going to find out what happened with Pac. That's why I say they're trying to rewrite history. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, Rewrite it to give it what you. I was listening like Jimmy Iovine, like saying we bailed Tupac out of jail. Right. He already had a platinum album. How did you bail him out when he got money already there? That means y'all didn't. Suge got his own money and bailed him out. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah, I noticed that on Defiant ones, it was like almost like he, the money was sent up from. Yeah, but from why he couldn't get his own money? He sold two million records. Why right, the money should have been man? there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You waited because they. So much trouble with Tupac and he's just leave him in there. Sugar and I'm like, nah. So how you gonna get Sugar the money? Sugar already got six hundred million. Mm. What kind of money you gonna get Sugar nine? Mm. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 and go get that. Yeah, so. How did you feel about All Eyes on Me, the movie? I mean, you know, when they was doing it, I was excited for Tupac, but then afterwards, it all just got faulty and you know, only money that we made off of that movie was the publishing and stuff, but we gave all the stories. But we didn't get compensated for none of that. You know what I'm saying? So 
That's why I shut down. I'm not giving none of my stories mm-hmm. away unless Until I put it's my yours, own. Yours. Mm-hmm. So anybody out there want to help the dog pound, put the dog pound story out, we going from day one. You know what I'm saying? This is what everybody want to know. And like I said before, I got a new series coming out called Cousins. Where my son, Snoop's son, is playing us. You know what I'm saying? This is before rap. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm about 11 episodes right now. I got one more weekend to shoot, and then I'm going to shop it. But this is before rap. And so the episode is going to last till we get the age of now. This was back in 1991. So, Daz, why, why do you speak so open when others don't? <sighs> because I'm going to tell you, man, <laughs> even this conversation, I'm over here like, <laughs> you know, yeah. what I mean? I'm polished. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm good. You know, I'm just, uh, I speak what I feel. I do what I feel, mm-hmm. and I do what I like. Do we get a chance to see Daz out? You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, yeah. We got shows coming up. I got one in Anthony's, Georgia with Big Gip. Me and Corrupt got an uh, Australia tour, and, you know, we just touring all around. We, you know, 20 minutes is all we need to rock yeah. the house. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we would love to come yeah, to one hey, of man. these functions just to we rock. We got to, bro. You know what I mean? Because you have all that, but me and Corrupt can really be on stage for about 10 hours. Yeah. Man. We yeah, have 25 yeah. years worth of music. Seeing you guys together, I got a chance to see you guys together at uh, Summertime in the LBC. Ooh. And I literally, I, I was crying just because growing up on the Dog Pound mm-hmm. and just seeing both of you on that stage and just hearing your catalog, oh, I was man. just in awe. And I was just looking around and like, we were in our city. Like, yeah. it was just amazing to see. And it just, it is so dope. If anybody hasn't seen you guys together, like, that is something you have to do in your and lifetime. Dad's- you guys influenced the world. The world. Because, and you see my buddy Kaz here. Kaz straight from Japan. Japan, I, huh? I've been they over there, bro. Japan. Man, because y'all got them there. <laughs> but just the influence over the world, because you got to think, man, at one point we see Catch Now, and it was like, oh, that's just West Coast stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, those, you know, the gangbang, oh, that's West Coast stuff. The cars are West Coast stuff. The, the 40 ounces, the way that they dress. And mm-hmm. then now you see the influence mm-hmm. that we put on the world from both sides, B's yeah. and C's. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that influence is around you know the world. Mm-hmm. And it's a unification for real, though. Yeah. But you guys put that on the map for what y'all thought was just Long Beach. Compton, yep. okay, West right. Coast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like, man, I enjoy doing what I'm doing, and then for the world to accept, and now it. And the for, whole world banging almost. Yeah, you man. Know what I mean, so you know, it's just like, wow. Need to make colors too. Hey, man, do you ever feel like, like your history as Daz Dillinger? hasn't been cemented yet and not cemented because you don't have work to do like because you, you're yeah. still working yeah. mm-hmm. but do you feel like like sometimes you got a like, star on the hollywood boulevard yeah just everything like that man or or when it come up in dopest mcs best yeah. groups mm. um uh producer, producer artists mm. you know what i'm saying business mind yeah we know but do you ever feel like man like the world doesn't know I mean, you know. That's it, why I can't wait till you tell your story, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I, I want to give it to them in a real vivid way, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I just appreciate it. But everywhere I go, they let me know. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because the way I dress, it stands out. Yeah, West yeah, Coast. yeah. Amen. Hey, man, Jesus, and you, so ain't, you have slow. never did one of those where we are like, man, what is Dad's doing? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he got a Gumby haircut and he, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, yeah. You ain't never strayed from the dads nope. that you introduced us to. Mm-mm, never that. You know, I'm always going to keep it 192.3 original. Dads, what's, what goes on for the the dads tomorrow? Like, what what do you see as far as a more production? We know the, the movies, the TV things. Like, what, you know, what's under that empire? Just being nicer, being nicer, you know, to expand a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? And uh, What do you mean by nicer? My attitude. Really? You know what I'm saying? Not being so aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Because this business, you have to be aggressive or they're going to take you for a little bit to not give you what the future holds for you. Mm. You know what I mean? So know your business. You know what I mean? I read a lot. So read your contracts, and that's being nice. I'm going to read it. You know, I'm not just, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, I appreciate everything that the fans and everyone gives me. You know what I'm saying? But as long as I'm still getting paid for my music, I'm doing okay. I heard that. And do, do you still get paid from what we still rock to? All the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, from JetBlue, I look at my statements. It's it's all on there. From I get paid from ASCAP and BMI. People are always like, how do you do that? 
Hey, man, did you know that what you guys were doing at the time we didn't were, know. were anthems? We didn't know. We was just working. Like, man, like we you just was could. just looking at Dr. Dre like, N W A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and I can go through, through the catalog, man. But when there's just certain songs that never stop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That will never stop. And, 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 and if we go through. You know, let's play house, or, mm-hmm. or yeah. even even just what 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 the crew felt yeah. like on on ain't no fun. Oh my yeah. god! You know what I'm saying? All, all these hit. We records. made ain't no fun in my living room. We used to do uh, uh, W balls. Yeah, when people call and you know, and I made the beat and they took it to Dre and then Dre flipped it and and I came to the studio and they was like, "Hey, it's done." Right? Did you did you get that a lot without throwing stones at anyone? But did you get a lot where it was like, "Oh man, that sounds dope. Let me take it and let me put it. Let me put my oomph on it." Yeah, we did a lot of that. You know, it was always giving the next artist what we had. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And we always would collaborate together. You know, that's why we always make good songs together. How special was Nate Dog to you, Daz? Mm-hmm. Real special. I remember one time Nate came in and said, "Cut me bald." Right, right, right. I oh, the, I got the clippers. <laughs> He's like, uh, "Yeah, let me hit the weed." And I'm like, "Well, you got two hundred dollars? You gonna pitch in?" <laughs> no, I got bills. <laughs> so you know, Nate was real authentic. We love him. You know what I'm saying? And we miss him. And the classic. I went to his grave the other day. You know, every time I pass by Cherry, I always mm. gotta stop. I heard that always man. stop. And that's another one, man. When yeah. we were here, it ain't a hit till Nate Dog spit. Like that yeah. was. That was that was real, and there, there'll never be another Nate dog. No, there won't. Never. You know what I'm saying? There's no comparisons. There's no, you know what I'm saying? Even with Ty Dolla Sign, cats would be like, "Oh, the new." And Ty was like, "No, mm-hmm. don't." You know but what Ty I'm saying? Ty Dolla Sign, dope. He is, he is but dope. he's you know I mean? he's dope. Ty Dolla Sign. We all family. We all inspire each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So he's inspired what Nate Dog did, and Nate Dog's inspired from what the old school artists like O'Brien, and you know, mm-hmm. we just. All we got to do is just keep Hey, man, when you first it. heard coming out of either a speaker or in the studio, when I met you last Ooh, night, baby. baby. Hey, say what? <laughs> Before you opened up, up your, your gap. Hey. What did you know then, dude? Like this crew record of everybody jumping on ain't no fun. Oh, uh, man, it was, it was a great record. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just seeing everyone put it together and having Dr. Dre mix it and just being in that whole death row Looking at it, mm-hmm. it was a glamorous. Was there a record like Ain't No Fun or something that you seen that so you good. didn't get on where you were like, ah? Ain't No Fun. Yeah! <laughs> Daz. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey. Daz. Now, this is, is this Daz produced right here? Yeah, it's Daz oh, produced man. right here, man. You was nominated for a Grammy for that. Ooh. Really, I though? I took my mother to the Grammys, me and Corrupt. Rest in peace to his mom, you know? All righty now. Daz. I'm yeah. going to see if I remember the corrupt. Yeah. All righty. All right, let's do it. Come I'm on. I'm going to see if I remember the corrupt. All righty. Hey. Here we go. Don't fall off, Ben. All righty. Here Come we on. go. Uh, All uh, righty. 92.3. Here, here we go. We're going to start from the top. Here we go now. All right. I was going to do that. You know, I got to do that part. Have you ever heard of a Wait, song? Wait, no. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. All righty. I, I got to see if I remember it. Hold on. Let me get some of this water. Hey. Let me get some of this water. Go. Uh-huh. Go. Go. Uh-huh. Go. All righty. You know, I always do this for me. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Have you ever heard of a slaughter? All that start dipping, sipping on the ST gets me to tripping. I don't slip slide bangs with the mad ass dog pound gang. It's a deep, deep, deep thing. Corrupt from the SC. You wanna test me? Let's see if you'll survive 45 times. Like a hollow point headed for your dome. Take a couple steps, turn around, then it's on. Couldn't withstand the murderous mental. I subdue, then take two to the temple. When a cause, call a cause from what's written. It's collapsed, the wind strap is spitting. Look, this is how it's done. DPG. Gun. I guess a punk, 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 I'm the G with the biggest yeah, somebody. somebody better recognize With the twist of my wrist like a J.U.R. guy Woo! I snack a fool just like a bone On the beat and shit on the microphone Ever since I was born Not to ever love a trick Learn game after game That's why we, we are, are the best to see Many be getting stabbed minute after minute But soon as you did it I smelled somebody Woo! Now what would you do If you can get with me or my crew But you can't so don't even think about it Stepping in the Mickey Ficky house. Yeah. So what would you do if you could with me or my crew? But you can't, so don't even think about hey. stepping. Hey, baby butterfly dog day. While I steady make my pay every single day in the LBC. 
Cruising through the east side, me and Big Big with the class of the big man up on the beach. Yeah. No escape. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. my God. Man, the victory so call cool. on I that. I try to switch the lyrics up, but you know, I there's a lot of cussing Oh, in man. All righty now, Daz. We're just talking off here about just some of the bumps in the road. Mm. You know, oh, yeah. you got to think, man. We we went from boys to men. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. not talking about the group, no. You know no. what I'm saying? But <laughs> and, and, and through your life with your travels, yeah. you get bumps, man. You know, you get bumps and bruises and there's mm. craziness and there's beefs. How did you get through all that? And, and where are those so-called beefs now? When we think about... Uh, uh, shoot, Dre the BG knockout. When we think about uh Luke, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Luke, like it, it, it was a lot the being funny said. Thing about with the Luke situation, while all the feud was going on with Luke and and uh, Dr. Dre, I was living at Luke's studio. Oh. Wow, you know what I'm saying? I was my homeboy Mike Fresh. He used to uh, let me stay at the studio, and Luke was in there, and Too Short used to come over there. I stayed off 12th Street in Miami. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I just seen Dre there at the homeboy at Will rest in peace. His funeral, you know what I'm saying? And, BG Knockout, and I talked to Capone from Noriega. You I know love what I'm saying? It. And it's just a lot of fuse it's that we had. It's crazy when you fast forward food, and you man. see, like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Like, we we made it through this. And we we didn't get a we chance to see. We made it through the see, trouble and the tribulation. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> see a chance to see other cats that you wish yeah, would have made it through, man. Yeah, that's, that would have been here to see. Yeah, all this, when, when you were at the, the Source Awards and you heard just the the you know all up in the videos and everything yeah. did you know then like oh hell like man this, or was it just was it just team going down we in new york yeah <laughs> you know what i mean but that wasn't the first time that we had a situation like that we had a situation like that at the first source awards where me Nate dog and corrupt went to accept an award for dr dre and snoop and we was getting booed Oh Outcast man! Outcast was there, and I got up there and said something like what Suge said, but a little bit more aggressive. And I was because trying to find that do. footage, and I found it on Instagram, and it was going down. So it was a layover, kind of from from that from as well, because the Source Awards was crazy, yeah, bro. But the third one, the fourth one, yeah, the, yeah, man, the one they had in Pasadena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to Quick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But but when you when you started to go into where we see like East Coast West Coast beef, yeah. do you feel like feel like that got more out of hand because it wasn't the people that was so called beefing? Do you feel like the world started to pay too much attention to it? Yeah, the world's paying attention just like it's paying attention now. And like I see right now how what's the dude named with the hair? Oh, uh, six nine, yeah, six nine. Know, a lot of West Coast, you know, is is. They, you know, I look at it like, is they trying to start an East Coast, West Coast war? You know what I'm saying? Because he's from the East Coast mm. and he's, this is the West Coast. And then you got everybody down here on a manhunt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I just hope we just get it all together, man. It's, it's too much money to be, you know what I mean? And yeah, and we've, and we've been through it. I mean, you know, hey, I'm going to let them go too. I'm going to sit back and watch it all. On yeah, TV. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Daz Dillinger, thank you so much for coming into the neighborhood and I hanging out with us, boy. The neighborhood. Man, I wish yeah, I had more time. instrumentals loaded because I would have got a smooth <laughs> oh concert out your ass right now, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would have got a so smooth dope. concert, man. But. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for coming into the neighborhood, man. Yeah, and like man, we say, man. I appreciate you for the years that you've given us, man. You no, know what I saying? appreciate you for the yeah. years you've given me. Both. Let me tell you what it is, too, though, Daz, man. Y'all made my job so easy because <laughs> all I had to do was press play. Yeah. And that's the best and thing you can you do. Feel. There it is. And mm -hmm. have three and a half minutes yeah. of something that I knew was a banger. And all I had to do was come in the middle of it and say something witty yeah. and get right back into, and, into what y'all were doing for me, man. man so, I appreciate it. Great I career to you. Everyone here. Appreciate yeah, you. Man. You know what I mean? He is nicer yeah. now. I hear everybody yeah. every morning. Man, thank you, brother. When I wake and bake now. early in the morning. Hello. 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 Back in the days when they're like, man, I love check all you out, bitches in here. Y'all yeah, check out my Wake and Bake show every morning on Instagram. You hear me? Man, Daz Dylan Jock. Man, Daz, once again, bro, I love you. And anything that you need in the neighborhood, man, please make sure that you hit us first. Bro. All the time. And man. that door is off the hinges. It ain't open. That door is off the I'm hinges. I'm going to backflip yeah, right up in here. All right, yes. believe me, man. That's my and I challenge anybody out there to backflip for 1000 to 2000 or 5000 You can backflip. One backflip. You can't backflip, I'm 250 bro. pounds. Yeah. And I can do that. I don't think That's you can, I can't even bro. do that. Yeah, I don't believe you. Yeah, can anybody else in this room backflip? Mm. If I'm with someone on like a trampoline, flip. yeah. Yeah. You would but be the one person I'd be like, couldn't backflip. I just did a backflip in the lobby. Hilarious. That's dope.
Hilarious. I got it on Fake camera. News. Stop it. <laughs> All right, yeah. I, I jumped no over camera. the 92.3 sign. No, you didn't. Stop. That's yeah, that too is high. fake news. And, yeah. he voted, and he voted for Trump, you guys. Right. I know. Wow. <laughs> he, he was like, oh, no. He was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't do that. Yeah. You like, talking about playing cards, Trump? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tr- we can't even say Trump card anymore. Remember Never back in the day, like, Damn. man, I trumped him. Mm. I'm going to put a Trump card. Yeah, now it's, yeah, we got to switch that up. Dad's in the neighborhood, Thank man. You. Big boy's neighborhood.